Welcome back to Free Media. I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Amber Duke. MSNBC confronted Bernie Sanders about Kamala Harris flip-flopping on progressive policies. Here's how he responded. Described Vice President Kamala Harris as a progressive. She has previously supported Medicare for All. Now uh, she does not. She's previously supported a ban on fracking. Now she does not. These, Senator, are ideas that you have campaigned on. Do you think that she is abandoning her progressive ideals? No, I don't think she's abandoning her ideals. I think she's trying to be pragmatic and doing what she thinks is right in order to win the election. Uh, my own view is, is slightly different. I, I think that in America today, there are a lot of people, rural people, working class people, who no longer believe that the United States Congress and government represents their interests, who dominated by big money interests. In order to win the election. Interesting. Quiet part out loud maybe there, Robbie. Very much so. Uh, he seems to be saying, well, no, she's so progressive. She's just saying she's not right now in order to, to win. Oops. Um, you know, I do think there's something to be said for, you know, people on the left, you and I interact with people on the left because we do Rising and it's a debate show with people on the left. And they'll, I think, often say to us, like, well, so many of these Bernie Sanders-esque economic policies are very popular. And... My rejoinder to that is always, well, they're popular depending on how you ask people about them. Like, yes, a lot of people like the idea of something for nothing if you just emphasize the benefit you're getting and minimize the cost. Like, yes, people like the idea of having health care coverage and everyone having health care coverage. But then if you say, well, do you like the idea of, you know, having longer lines and more rationing of care and having more th other people's things paid for by you and then having the prices go up because there's price disguised because it's all being government subsidized, well, then everybody doesn't like it. But if you just say, oh, Medicare for all, health care for all, that sounds good. And that's a appealing policy. Yeah, it's sort of, uh, I always compare it to like when the, the fifth grade, fifth grader is running for class president and he says, hey guys, we're gonna have a, a huge pizza party if I win and then Surprise! You vote for him, and you never. Get I would the vote free against that right party. now. I've had so much pizza in the last week. There's, cause there's been we're gonna have this we debate coverage. So there's gonna be more pizza. A lot of pizza. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I, I vote for the this time, this week, and this week only. I would vote for the salad candidate. I've just had too much. Yeah, pizza. fair enough. We'll vote for the salad candidate. Um, but I was actually thinking the same thing about the progressives we interact with on the show because some of them are big fans of Kamala. And yeah. I've been trying to figure out why, because if I were someone whose candidate had abandoned all of the positions that yeah. I supported in order to win the election. Electric vehicle mandate, I don't know her. Um, decriminalizing, decriminalizing illegal immigration. Don't know her. Defunding ICE, Done. don't know her. No. Yeah. So, I mean, I would be upset with that and yeah. I would question what their motives truly were. And I started thinking to myself, well, if they still support her, maybe they know something we don't, and maybe they believe yes. in their gut that Kamala is going to end up returning to those positions if she wins the presidency, and maybe that should give us some pause. I think she would just do whatever is possible. Like, wh I think she wants to be president no matter what, and she thought she had to embrace those policies in the 2019-2020 timeframe. And now she knows they're unpopular and she's not embracing them. But yes, once she gets into office, would she change? Would she go back on, especially right. some of the energy stuff? Exactly. Or would, independent of what she thinks, who cares what she thinks, is she going to appoint people? Is she going to continue to staff the federal government um, with, you know, progressive bureaucrats who want to, it appeals to them ideologically, make it more difficult for businesses to operate, for um, for to, to impose regulatory costs, environmental costs, energy costs on firms, ultimately on customers, because that is what the Progressive Project is about, um, and that that will continue. I mean, that will continue absent massive intervention from ideologically small government-minded people somehow winning and somehow shrinking these agencies again, um, which we do have some power to do now that the Supreme Court is again trying to return um, rulemaking powers on bureaucratic matters to Congress rather than the, career, the professional civil service deep state bureaucracy that just remains in power regardless of which party ostensibly controls the government. Yeah, and we were just talking about Elon Musk in uh, another part of the show, and he's being tapped by Trump to potentially lead a government efficiency commission. 
who knows if that would actually work out. But I love the I idea, I wanna, right? Yeah. I mean, well, I, I, maybe, but it, it's like then okay, there'll be another government. There's that's another government commission. I know. Then we'll have to have a government efficiency commission about the efficiency commissions, and it's like yeah, there has to be a, a red line of no more. Yeah. Yeah, creating bureaucracy to get rid of bureaucracy. But if it's done correctly, I think it's yeah, it's fine. But um, I would say on Kamala's policies and where she actually stands and if she just will say whatever or do whatever to be in power, I tend to think that the progressive Kamala is the more likely to be what she actually believes, if only because if you go back to the beginning of her political career, when she was tapped to join the San Francisco DA's office as an assistant district attorney, she was working under this guy named Terrence Hallinan, who was a very progressive prosecutor and his father was like an avowed communist activist. And when she ran against him in 2003, after promising she wouldn't, by the way, because she loves backstabbing her bosses, she ran as someone who was going to implement the same policies, but do it more effectively mm -hmm. and efficiently. Than an avowed communist would. Exactly. She wanted to do the progressivism, but better. An, 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 a dis an unavowed, disavowed communist is maybe the only thing Worry, more worrisome than an avowed communist. Exactly. And she ended up doing that, it seems. I mean, at the very least, she had this policy that she implemented that um, allowed people who had been convicted of violent crime to get out of serving jail time by giving them a job, going through a work program, well, and extended that, like that to illegal immigrants, one mm -hmm. of whom then ran over a woman's skull and fractured I mean, her head. So that I would rather have good. people working, I guess, than being in, just incarcerating large numbers of people is costly for taxpayers. I don't care. That. If they're violent, you go to jail. Well, Sorry. If they're violent, they should be, well, yeah, they should go to jail, yes. But yeah. they should maybe you can, work and. Well, that depends maybe, while you're in is. jail, maybe. Yeah. But this was to avoid prison time is you just give them a job. Okay. Because the, the idea was that if somebody has a job, then they don't commit crime, which is just, oh. sorry, but that's not, not how crime works. Well, I think getting some of the people in our city who are committing a lot of crimes, jobs, or something else to occupy their time would be somewhat of a crime determinant here in D.C. because we have a lot of the carjackings are like gangs of teenagers that are just loitering around all the time. And I'm like, you should have a job or an after school activity or something. But that might be different. Yeah, so that'd be nice. I mean, the fundamental problem when I talk to people who are in law enforcement or have worked in, you know, prosecutors' offices. So that criminals are not, it's, it's, most crime is not motivated by money right. in terms of someone is poor. It's usually because criminals are impulsive. Right. And they can't control their sort of instinct to take the easy way out, right. so to speak. Hmm. All right, we'll have more free media in just a minute.